Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to take a closer look at some recent semiconductor news impacting my favorite semiconductors and a lot of AI news as well. So one of the companies we're obviously going to discuss is NVIDIA and the recent talks that they are planning on building just pure CPU solutions, uh, which obviously is something that AMD and Intel investors should hear. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. First, before we kind of get into NVIDIA, what I want to take a closer look at is there are reports from Canalyst that the global PC market is set for an 8% growth in 2024. And that's that the market is actually expected to return to growth in the quarter four of 2024 with roughly 5% growth there. Uh, and this is after this PC market has kind of seen this weakness due to over inventory correction. They do mention that looking ahead for full year 2024 shipments are forecasted to hit 267 million units, landing 8% higher than in 2023 helped by tailwinds including the Windows refresh cycle and obviously AI capable and ARM based devices like those we saw from Qualcomm and from um, Apple. Uh, so we can see that 2022, it does seem like we're not going to get shipments like we saw in 2021 during kind of this COVID working from at home era, but we are expected to see, see growth in 2024 and in 2025. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. So obviously this bodes well for a lot of, of our favorite semiconductor companies like NVIDIA, like AMD and like Intel. NVIDIA provides a lot of GPU solutions for these kind of laptops and PC shipments. We also know that AMD and Intel provide CPU solutions uh, for these PC markets. I do want to say it is also important that we are seeing a little bit more in competition in this space. We know Qualcomm is expected to release their new PC solutions um, with their new Snapdragon Elite that we've talked about in the past. Um, they expect that in 2024. And we know that obviously Apple has their own ARM-based CPU solutions for the PC market with their Mac products. So definitely interesting, but this does bode well for a lot of semiconductor companies. Now, the second thing I want to take a closer look at is NVIDIA. And there are reports that NVIDIA is open to releasing an ARM-based gray CPU as a standalone product for servers and i actually discussed this and other key takeaways on my membership program i'm about to release this video in the next three days i'm actually releasing um key takeaways from a lot of events that are happening in the semiconductor market so if you're curious about the semiconductor space click join to learn more i have a lot of great information a lot of deep dives and we talked about nvidia's investors key takeaways i'm gonna look at AMD and some other companies in the upcoming days so click join to learn more but just on the top level overview we do know that nvidia has created their grace cpu they've also but it's pretty much being paired as a grace hopper uh right the grace hopper super chip that we just saw amazon aws announce that they are going to create the biggest grace hopper super super chip computer to be one of the leading ai supercomputers in the world uh so right now we are seeing that hey nvidia does have strong gpus and they have some decent enough cpus that together they're getting a lot of traction but now it does seem like top management at NVIDIA believes that there is plenty and plenty of opportunity for the gray CPU. Uh, so obviously that's uh, that's something we're going to have to see and kind of evolve over time. But if they're thinking about it or they're discussing it during events, it does mean like they are ready to maybe, uh, at, they're a few steps ahead of that, right? And I do believe in the upcoming quarters, we're going to continue to see AI workloads. But we know that not all AI workloads needs to be accelerated via a GPU. CPU. And I do believe this is where NVIDIA CPUs are going to do amazing, where there's going to be AI workloads that run on CPUs. We've heard about it a lot from Intel, right? Intel pushes that, hey, look, our Intel Sapphire Rapids are doing amazing on AI workloads. Uh, well, NVIDIA can come out and say, look, our Grace CPU does amazing for AI workloads. So maybe you don't need a H100. Maybe you don't need a H200. Maybe you're fine with just our Grace CPU for the AI workload needs that you have. Uh, so I do that believe that bodes well. There is another NVIDIA news that I have here. Uh, and this is from Dell Technologies. You know, Dell Technologies creates a lot of servers. Uh, they've 
also kind of create supercomputers in their own way. On November 28th, they announced that Imbued is to develop next generation AI models with Dell's high performance computing system. And Dell is going to create this Power Edge server cluster with nearly 10,000 NVIDIA H100 TensorFlow GPUs to train foundation models. And this is what we're seeing, right? So many people are wondering, hey, Jose, how much AI growth can there be? Like I mentioned, I talk a lot about this and go a little bit more deep in my membership program. So check that out. But we can see small companies, big companies are focusing on foundation models. We're seeing other avenues outside of just your typical cloud server providers really pushing in the AI space. Uh, so there definitely seems to be a nice amount of growth opportunity. Um, here they do mention that um, Imbued is already using the clustered power by Dell's Power Edge servers with NVIDIA's H100 to train AI models and they continue to kind of build and create this super super computer. I also want to say that this kind of showcases or might be like a bearish case for super micro computer investors right because we can see that Dell and other server creators not just super micro can also benefit from the AI race and this is something that we have discussed numerous times in this channel as well. Now the next kind of news that I have here with the AI market is Broadcom. Broadcom just recently introduced the industry's first switch with on-chip neural networks. And for those that are not familiar with Broadcom, Broadcom creates semiconductor solutions that go on networking switch. While they themselves don't create the networking switch, it's pretty much how like AMD and Intel create CPUs. Broadcom creates like a CPU that goes into the networking switch. So other OEM players buy their chips and kind of create their own kind of um, networking solutions. But they do mention that this new Trident 5X12 is one that has that neural net network, which they call net g net um, and this is using kind of machine learning and artificial intelligence to really look at the kind of information and data coming through the port and if it's saying the networking solution usually reads it one at a time and this kind of causes some form of congestion so to kind of improve that it kind of determines hey look this is this type of solution based on my data no no set of all of how it works so now i can kind of make this a little bit faster and create congestion control techniques to avoid degrading network performance so pretty interesting how ai is coming into numerous markets um, this is a solution that is already shipping to qualified customers and obviously we'll hear a little bit more about this obviously i do believe we're going to start to see more ethernet switches kind of use this solution as right now ai is everything so that's pretty interesting with broadcom unfortunately some negative news for broadcom they just finished their acquisition and one of the first things that they're doing is cutting almost 1,300 VMware jobs in California after the takeover. Now, the final thing I want to take a closer look at is obviously we talk a lot about CPUs. And when we think of CPUs, we usually talk about x86 architecture. Then second in line is ARM-based architecture. But there is a third architecture or kind of instruction set, um, uh, ISA, that's used a lot or not used a lot, but it's kind of common not common it's popular at the moment right it's popular and that's an open source risk five uh so renaissance who is a big player in microcontrollers has actually designed their first own 32-bit risk five cpu core and it's ahead of the competition uh so pretty interesting here i don't believe risk five is really coming to maybe data center servers maybe in the pc market anytime soon but as we continue to see being involved in the embedded market in the microcontroller market i do believe it's going to grow popularity and then that's where it happens right you normally start to see in the embedded market in these niche bases and then you start to see that growth happen over time in other solutions so not something that i personally would worry about if i was an amd investor if i was an intel investor but something that hey maybe i should learn a little bit more about this to see where this market opportunities and what are some of the companies that are following risk fi at the moment so i hope you guys enjoyed this quick update in the semiconductor space uh, a lot of ai solutions here so uh, let me know what are your thoughts in the comments below take care have a good day and see you next time.